Right, gents. Rob, back to you. The cricket, the Aussies have just wrapped up the first test at Kingsmead by 118 runs. Uh, Mitchell Stark, the pick of the Aussie bowlers, really killing the South African at low order with that reverse swing of his. Um, but it seems like the Proteas' first innings with the bat was ultimately the undoing, you know, despite um, a valiant performance by Adam Markram in the second innings as well as uh, Quentin de Kock. Yeah, that, that really was the, the killer. Um, we, we batted for a pitifully you know, low length of time uh, in that first innings. Um, kept, meant the Australians stayed pretty fresh. Their bowlers didn't get too much of a gallop in that first innings and were then able to sort of put in a slightly more marathon shift uh, in, in the South African second innings when you would have expected some sort of South African response or fight back, which at least did happen to an extent. Um, so, you know, the positive to bank, as you say, Aidan Markram, uh, uh, I think a real landmark innings for him, mm. uh, really proving against the top-notch team for the first time that he is capable of, of big runs. 143 is a pretty decent uh, effort uh, under the circumstances. He got pretty much half mm. the South African runs in yeah. the second innings. And I thought he looked very good technically in the first innings too, before he got out for, for 32. And people were saying, is he going to be a sort of a 20s, 30s player? Um, and then, he, of course, he, he proved uh, by, with a second innings knock that he, he, he can go an awful lot further. Uh, his first, ma you know, really significant test innings and hopefully the first mm. of many. But, you know, in many ways we were sort of bullied out of that test. Um, I think the Australians um, uh, got that, that real sort of um, snarling aggression going. Uh, David Warner running in all the time um, and, uh, you know, full of, full of aggression. And it started Lots of sledging. To, absolutely. And we saw that, there's, you know, there's been some flashpoints uh, mm -hmm. uh, subsequently, a few issues around discipline. Nathan Lyon is now potentially in a little bit of trouble for his little uh, drop the ball on AB mm -hmm. after his uh, suicidal mm -hmm. run, etc. So, you know, the Australians, it, I think it was a deliberate tactic to, to unsettle a South mm -hmm. African team that was a little bit undercooked. Remember that a lot of our players went into the test match with, you know, having just recovered from a race against time against broken fingers and various things yeah. some guys hadn't held a bat for a few weeks and so that they cashed in um, and they, they took on South Africa both mentally and in terms of cricketing excellence and you know sadly prevailed fairly convincingly bit of a wake-up call for South Africa but I think South African fans will be will be wanting a response in in Port Elizabeth mm. Garen uh, do you think that the South African bowling attack uh, at the moment can rival that of Australia's obviously it's a real strong point of theirs um, you know, yeah. there's been a lot, lot of rave reviews about South Africa's as well, though, mm. leading up to this test series. Absolutely. I think if you look at world cricket, they probably possess the two best um, um, bowling lineups, the Australia and South Africa. I think the problem that South Africa are, are going to have is that Mitchell Stark is probably better than our number one, Kahisa Rabada, certainly when it comes to reverse swing, certainly when it comes to batting. You know, he offers more as sort of like an all-rounder. Yeah. So, you know, he, he's a key player in, 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 the, in the team. You saw him pick up some really important runs as well. And then when you, when you think um, that Dale Stain is obviously missing from the South African lineup, Morning Morkel's just announced his retirement. He's sort of playing under this cloud of, you know, four matches to go, three, two, and one, and then he's gone. Um, and, and, and then um, Ngidi, who's, who was obviously the flavor of the month against India, he was left out, I'd say almost fairly controversially as well. I was quite surprised that <coughs> Morkel perhaps even got the nod in, in, in for this match. So, and, and then we saw Philander, uh, Rob, I'm not sure what you think about it, but um, Quinton de Kock standing up to Vernon Philander, I don't think that's happened many times mm. in his career. You know, it, the wicket sort of didn't play into our hands. It just mm. it played more into the hands of those bowlers that had sort of mastered the art of reverse swing and could get the ball to sort of talk at the, at the tail enders in particular. And our tail end was certainly exposed. As I mentioned, the Australian um, tail orders picked up some quite key runs. I think in the first innings in particular, it looked like we would um, um, sort of hold them to 270. They end up getting 351, I yeah. think it was. So that 80 run psychological um, extra that they picked up yeah. certainly came to back to haunt us at the end when you consider that we only lost by 118. The 80 runs made a big, big difference. So it seems like they've got the upper hand, obviously amongst the batsmen, when you compare your batsman to batsmen, South Africa do possess on paper a fairly top, uh, strong top six or even seven, mm. but they're just not firing at the moment. As Rob said, a couple of them got injuries, overcoming injuries. Um, David Warner, obviously, and Steve Smith, top, top players in world cricket. But Hashim Amla, A.B. de Villiers, certainly in the second innings, Fafta Duplessis, they're just not um, mm. even scoring the averages. If they just did that, we would be in a far better position. So obviously lots to work on ahead of the PE test, which I'm not sure is going to offer much in terms of a, a hotbed of South African cricket um, in terms of fans and where we've got a great record and the wicket's going to yeah. sort of not um, um, suit the speeches, I think, <coughs> again. Obviously, it'd be great if some, uh, some fans turned up as well to support the local side. 
But yeah, so I'm a bit worried about this, this series. I think we came in a bit undercooked in terms of the fact we'd come off a 2020 series mm. and then an ODI before that. And Australia played a three-day warm-up match against a fairly strong SAA team. So they were far better prepared, I think. Um, so hopefully things improve. But, you know, I think there are a few changes that are coming to that South African um, starting 11 in 4PE. Mm.